This is an examination of the hidden human condition. This is the Hidden Killers Podcast with Tony Bruschi. Jennifer Kaufman, after retired FBI special agent, Hidden Killers contributor. She's joining us as we discuss Rex Hurman, uh big treasure trove of evidence being taken out of the home just the other week. And some of it uh, presented and talked about in a uh, court hearing just the other day. What do you think we are going to be finding and learning out in the coming weeks, months, maybe even years uh, about Rex and, and those items and those pieces of evidence that have now been collected? Well, I want to see what they really were able to recover from inside that house. You'll recall they were there about 11, 12 days yep. uh, working nonstop uh large evidence recovery teams uh, going through everything inside and outside of that house. It's That's so unusual. That house was not that large. And it just told me that there was so much information for them to collect, for them to catalog, for them to properly handle that it took that extensive amount of time. I think we're going to see just a huge amount of, of information dating back possibly even to childhood, high school, college. You know, he bought that house in 1994. He's lived in that house his life. And serial killers um, like him, again, allegedly, uh, this wouldn't have just been out of the blue. He would have likely had thoughts uh, regarding all of this and fantasies for years. And I'll be interested to see uh, what all forensically they come up with. I think it's going to be a lot, Tony. I am looking at this, and obviously I am not a doctor, but I can make some observations. It looks like a hoarder house. Uh, I'm guessing Rex Hewerman was a hoarder. That's just my visual observation on him collecting 200-some guns. Uh, that's my observations of looking at the shots from inside of the house after the FBI raid, the sheer amount of boxes that are stacked in all different places and areas. That's not necessarily what looks to be like an FBI raid. It looks like the FBI had to go through a hoarder house and try and raid it and, and figure out what was going on uh, within the stacks of everything. That's one of my guesses of why it took as long as it did. Uh, and as we know, in the past, uh, people, serial killers, sort of like this that fit this sort of profile, Dennis Rader comes to mind. He had hidey holes, is what he called him, around his house uh, with different trophies and such. If if we can assume that Rex Hewerman is a hoarder, what does that tell us about the likelihood of him keeping trophies for the crimes he allegedly committed? Well, I think that is very likely. I always was... Uh very interested by the doll that they took, you know, keeping in mind that when we go in and look, we're looking for evidence. We don't want anything extraneous to keep in our evidence vault to, to look at and have analyzed. Uh, there's too much of the good stuff. So I found it very interesting. They took that doll. It always made me wonder yeah. if that doll wasn't dressed in something that would have been a trophy, possibly from one of his victims. Yeah. Um, you know, just uh, some of some of the other items that were taken, of course, were just the boxes and boxes of of evidence. And I just, again, they're not going to take anything that they don't deem as being important to the investigation. Mm -hmm. I think it'll also be interesting to see all of those animal cages that they took. Yeah, litter, animal cages. You know, was he? keeping victims alive for a period of time when his family was out of town. Yeah. You know, many serial killers do that. They don't just, you know, kill them and, and immediately, um, uh, you know, uh, do what their plans are. They, they wait and they torture and they bind. You know, you mentioned BTK yeah. earlier. I wonder how long he had those women possibly alive in that house, and if indeed they're going to be able to show that that is where they were murdered. I, I do wonder about those animal cages, and I'm doubtful that it was used for the use of animal uh, storage. Uh, it's the wrong animal storage. Everybody puts their animals into storage. Uh, the, uh, the, the doll you had mentioned, that was a very creepy one to see being rolled out of there. Now, we're talking a house where 
There's uh, his wife that lives there. There uh, is a daughter. Uh, you know, one could say, well, maybe it's just, you know, the wife's doll from her collection. But to your point, uh, they're only going to take things out of there that they think are pertinent to this investigation. Would the placement of where they found that doll likely have played a big role as to why they thought we should be wheeling this thing out of here, too? Absolutely. I believe that he would have had a place that was separated uh, from the rest of the house where he would have conducted his uh, surveillance, his trolling on the Internet, his searches, his, uh, you know, writings. Uh, if he committed these murders there where all of that would have taken place. Yeah. Uh, and I think that that's why the wife and the children were kept in the dark, if you will. I think he had total and absolute control over that house, yeah. uh, likely over them as well. And, you know, what happened in, in Daddy's Man Cave stayed in Daddy's Man Cave. I, I think that that's why they don't know and are innocents in this case. I, I have a horrible prediction on the doll, um, and I, I don't like to give predictions, but when I saw that thing being wheeled out the other day, the first thing that came to mind was, I wonder if the victim's hair are on that doll. Well... It's very possible. I, I think I can see it going several ways. Yeah. Uh, any part or piece from the victim, yeah. uh, any amount of clothing. And then I could also see uh, that doll being used as uh, in his fantasy. Yeah. Let's just put it that way. Um, but there's a reason they took it. And uh, hopefully they'll get to the bottom of it. But it's, it's those sort of absolutely gory, creepy details mm -hmm. Uh, that I think all of us are just wondering what really happened behind those closed doors. This is an examination of the hidden human condition. This is the Hidden Killers Podcast. The Hidden Killers Podcast. With Tony Bruschi.